free. Gary is uh, from Alibaba Cow. He is uh, the principal uh, advisory consultant uh, from Alibaba Cow, and he will be talking about some something talking about the how to fast track to the open banking. So, uh, Gary, so um, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. So uh, can you try to share the screen and then I will make sure that it's all done. Okay, so okay. you can kick it uh, the full screen. All right, so is that okay? Yeah, it's good. So the, the your voice is also good. So uh, I will leave the stage to you. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Um, good afternoon uh, or, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. So um, this is Gary. So uh, I'm the principal advisor consultant for Alibaba Cloud International. Uh, so I specifically look after the FinTech and innovation uh, product management suite uh, based out of Hong Kong. So very, uh, it's my great pleasure to talk to you about how to fast track the open banking ecosystem with the platform business model. Now, um, I often like to start with this slide. Uh, it's an extension report, talks about uh, the 10 key questions to assess digital maturity. Now. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but really, it's it's something that I hope, uh, as you listen to the the presentation, you also uh, reflect uh, in terms of the work that you're doing at the moment, and and really ask yourself, are you ready for the fast lane? Now, uh, some of the key things that I've highlighted in orange here, especially, it, it talks about uh, embracing open banking. You know, are you ready for it? Um, are you ready to adopt and push the boundaries of your business model? And also, I think a very important point, which is around. Do you have a disciplined approach towards engaging with the, the fintech community? Now, in the open banking context, this is uh, it may be beyond fintech, but certainly fintech is one of the uh, the, the bigger uh, ecosystem players that are currently focused on supporting open banking. Now, a lot of people have different definition of what platform business model means. So uh, I'm not going to try and redefine it. All I'm going to do is share uh, how we as an Alibaba group look at it from a digital economy uh, perspective. Now, really, um, a platform business model is, is really focused on not necessarily about doing everything, right? Um, it's about being very good at what you do and be able to release that capability through the clever use of technology. Now, in this case, um, open API is certainly one of them, uh, often widely used within our own group as well. Now, um, so if you look at the sort of the left hand side, it, it just, it's a different. Uh, a number of different uh, what we call internal capabilities. So for example, Alibaba Cloud, we are the infrastructure for cloud, uh, AI and big data. Um, now, often what we do is also we help Alibaba Group to export the capability, for example, right, uh, in our uh, AMAP, which is our digital navigation in our uh, N group, which is around our payment and uh, financial services infrastructure. They go via, so through uh, the use of uh, API, uh, open API technologies for our infrastructure, we actually were able to then provide the services to those who we need to serve, right? Be it uh, in the B2B context or B2C or even the B2G in terms of the, our, our government. Now, working up uh, the, the the platform, then we start to see uh, Alimama providing the marketing uh, infrastructure, and then we have logistics from our China, and then we have a range of consumer, uh, be it in the retail and wholesale. Uh, retail businesses, uh, consumer services, and even digital media. So the crux of it is that through um, uh, the use of technology now, we're able to then provide all this capability both as a whole unit. So in a banking context, we can we can actually go end to end, um, or we can actually provide uh, different layers. So we can just provide cloud and data technology. We can just provide fintech. We can split out logistics, and we split out consumer. But together, it has a certain uh, uh, a magnifying uh, effect, right? And this is where um, we like to. I like to say that in the context of open banking, um, thinking like a platform uh, business is really going to help you to open up. First of all, open up yourself so that you're open to work with the other players that are, uh, are currently providing different capabilities out there to help supplement what you do. And at the end of the day, is really providing the best services possible to your customers. Um, okay, so open banking, and uh, we have now, you know, especially in Hong Kong, for example, uh, eight new virtual banks. Uh, most of it is open, except for uh, one or two. Now, change they're, they're certainly changing the landscape, but where does open banking itself uh, fit in the in the context of this? Right now, it's interestingly, if you look at a Hong Kong context, uh, many of these banks are actually. Uh, 
owned by a mixture of different what I call uh, platform companies, right? So uh, there, there's banks in there, there's travel companies in there, there's telecommunications companies in there, uh, stock exchange, et cetera. So it, it's, a, it's a good question to ask. How come, you know, what, what do they have to do uh, to, to in, a, in a financial services uh, world, right? Which I'll, I'll try and explain a bit later on. Um, now, in taking a, a more global view, we can see that you know there are different movements in in open banking. Some are more prescriptive, some uh, the regulator is more consultative, and then some that you know is really just open to the market to to define uh, how they want to how they want to proceed. So if you take a look at this uh, Basel Committee report, um, you can see that depending on where you are now, Hong Kong is facilitative, so. Uh, Hong Kong uh, Monetary Authority is currently working with the industry to uh, survey them in terms of phase three and phase four, but um, about what potentially uh, they can help to facilitate under the Open API uh, framework. Now, um, it's already uh, in progress. So it's phase one and phase two is already uh, ongoing. Now, phase three and phase four, a lot of people say, okay, what, what's, what's the big deal, right? Um, so phase three and phase four really start to touch on the account information and uh, and funds transfer. So really, we're we're starting to dip into not just um, we're really touching on the customers' data that are now really their transactional data. We're talking about funding instructions, um, you know, real sort of um, transactions that will come with more consequence if something doesn't work, right? Uh, whereas I think in phase one, phase two is very much about you know, I call it the brochureware or it could be credit card points. So it's not really direct uh, value transactions. Now, because of this, right, and if you look at cross-region, um, different levels of uh, approaches depending on, uh, you know, so you as a, as a whether you're, you're a bank itself or whether you're uh, a fintech or whether you're even an e-commerce retailer who are looking to embrace this opportunity, then, okay, so how do you, what do you, what should you do, right? How should you, uh, how should you go about it? Um, and then we look at, okay, there's, there's certain benefits, but it's not just the good, right? There's also the, the drawbacks of um, an open framework. So an open framework facilitates uh, a, you know, a lot of benefits because not only are you getting more data to help with your decision-making, right? Now, in banking, it's, we're in the business of risk management. So the more data you have access to, now, of course, this is under... Uh, under the provision that the customer have uh, approved the use of data. Because at the end of the day, I just want to remind everyone, right? Uh, banks' data is actually a collection of the customer's data. So it's not the bank's data. Banks bank don't own anything, right? It, you, you actually, you're a facilitator of that information. And so the customers have their complete control. And this is what's exciting about uh, open banking. Because if you look at the drawback, right? Uh, there's a misconception that, you know, um, what happens to privacy? Uh, so would you say that if, if I give access to a bank to give it to a fintech to aggregate my balance, is that an breach of my privacy? No, right? Because I, as a customer, knowingly uh, provide that uh, approval to make use of. But what then comes as a benefit is then you get to draw on what I mentioned, right? Third-party capabilities. So different companies out there, fintech ecosystems, platform providers out there, um, and with a greater scale of data, because data is going to help drive a lot of these uh, insights at the end of the day, right? It is about giving better quality products because institutions or regulators or even customers, they, they should expect that uh, a lot of these products and services will be a lot more efficient, right? Be it time, costs. Uh, and then, of course, regulator plays a very, very important part to support, right? So a lot of these frameworks, really, it's it's not... Um, yeah, prescription is pres prescriptive the right way to go. Yes, it's it's one way to go to to make progress, but consultative, there's nothing wrong with that as well. So as long as it's helping the industry to head to the right direction, you know, I was in an interview maybe a, a few days ago, right, with um with the regulator and and the facilitator around uh, what what the industry should be looking at. So we look at it from a non-financial institution point of view. Uh, but you can see the value of not just um, financial institutions playing in this space, right? Um, and then most importantly for the, then the regulator is, you know, to be able to provide an effective uh, oversight because uh, at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, um, 
we're not going to look at the platform companies. We're not going to look at the banks. Um, we're going to look at the regulators first. Um, where do the opportunities sit, right, uh, for, 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 for platform companies and under the open API context? Um, just taking a Hong Kong reference, right? So in phase three and phase four, for under account information and also under transactions, uh, there's an there's abundance of um, opportunities that are being identified. And you can, you can imagine uh, you as a bank, uh, are you really going to do everything? Are you really going to uh, try to uh, make use of um, every single part? Or are you going to actually partner with uh, vertical players out there who, you know, for example, uh, are, are, are deep, have deep expertise in, say, for example, wealth management? So the portfolio uh, advisory side, the personal financial uh, management side, you're you're probably going to partner with them, right? Thanks to thanks to the Open API framework, who's going to uh, make the whole integration a lot more easier. Now, the technology side is always going to be there. That's not going to change, right? But what it what it gives us is an ability to rethink the way we do business and potentially do things that we wouldn't have done because we it's either too costly or it's not part of the bank's priority to, to, to work on. So for example, SME lending, a lot of, it's a space that a lot of people didn't, a lot of banks don't want to touch, right? Because traditionally uh, it is relatively high risk for, for the capital that you put against. But uh, again, thanks to the Open API framework, there are a lot more what I call alternate uh, data source out there, right? That you can leverage in order to uh, help actually SMEs uh, to 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 prove that they are indeed credit worthy, right? They they they're actually probably better than uh, maybe some of the corporates out there, right? We, we uh, thanks to thanks to access to uh, data that are no longer just your you know your your P and L, your balance sheet, your your corporate statements, right? Now you can actually look at and go, all right, uh, how's this person uh, in terms of its supply chain, in terms of its um. Uh, the ability to pay back other loans. So alternative data that can certainly help uh, to make credit right, and to establish trust a lot easier than uh, versus uh, previous. Um, benefits, right? Where, where do we start, right? So um, not only is open banking itself going to help uh, and, and open up a lot or more uh, new business opportunities, but really being taking a platform business strategy. Because I always say that open API is very, it's a very technology term, right? API itself is, is you know, it's an interface, right? It's, it's nothing, it's not new. But so I, I like to use platform business strategy as opposed to open API strategy, because I think everything starts from the business strategy side, right? And then we look at how technology can supplement and reshape and create, right? Plus new possibilities. So here on the left-hand side, right? creating new opportunities that I mentioned before that you otherwise wouldn't consider. Uh, really innovation, right? Innovation really just means that you're trying something new, right? You're doing something that you haven't done before. Um, so if you're a retail bank, you're trying SME lending. If you're doing uh, corporate institutional, you started to dabble onto uh, doing retail. So a lot of these are possible thanks to the framework and also thanks to the ecosystem that participates. And they're participating because being more open, it's driving the cost of participation down. It's making access to data easier. And because of that, it's easier to start small or it, it's more enticing for smaller players to, to play a part, right? They can play a part because they can be small, they can be nimble, but they can be very good at the deep vertical, right? Uh, for example, just payments, just uh, credit, uh, aggregation, um, the list, the list goes on. Um, and then what what we're really talking about here is the, is the decoupling, right? So you you really leave the uh, the capability to those who are best capable at at serving. And then of course number five, uh, the interconnectivity. Um, Hong Kong rolling out five G, for example, uh, the urban rollout is now the coverage is more than ninety percent, right? So we're not talking about a concept. Uh, we're talking about real business driver. Cons consumers are moving on to five G. So with that, it's going to lead on to explosion of IoT that, of course, then leads on to explosion of data that will be captured, right, in terms of a, a, a positive cycle. Now, is it just all about just being a platform or, or, or using APIs? No, right? You need to have an ability to uh, 
to monetize, right? You need to run a sustainable business. So it's going to range from direct benefits, right? So people look at fees, they look at uh, could be direct transactional access fee, or there could be uh, revenue uh, sharing, it could be uh, referral of, of leads. Um, and then, of course, the indirect side of things, which is around your branding, around really having data for insights that uh, whilst having data itself is not going to save you money, but if you can use it properly, uh, and it's going to help bring down your, your, for example, your risk management, your credit, uh, the cost of credit, it's going to benefit a lot of people, both from yourself and also your partners. And of course, uh, a lot of these uh, is going to force um, companies to, to be more nimble in terms of their technology infrastructure, which hopefully they would start to talk about agile microservices, uh, reusability. So again, this is going to help make things even easier and faster and hopefully cheaper and more efficient. Um, so what can it look like, right? So um, this is just our view of um, where the current technology focus is. Now, what you see in the bottom right, the, the digital onboarding servicing, having an agile call, having trusted data-driven decisioning, and we, we sort of overlay that with, um, with the clever use of blockchain-backed uh, solutions. And then, of course, the bread and butter, which is a very uh, secure and stable foundation. Now, each one of these, really, nothing is fundamentally new, right, as a, as a concept. Now, there's, there's a lot more uh, technology out there, uh, which are, so for example, use of cloud, big data, so on and so forth, right? A, B, C, D, E, whichever, depends on whichever world you came from. Um, but really, it, to me, it's all about being ready to be part of and to connect with the open banking and fintech ecosystem operators. Now, I've, I reckon in, in the open banking context, the, the word fintech is going to, that will evolve as well, right? It's no longer going to be branded as, as fintech, but really it's just the open ecosystem players who actually have um, needs of, uh, or, or either as a, a financial services provider or financial services consumer, uh, even though themselves is not considered a financial services company. Um, now, it's not just Gary or Alibaba Cloud talking about it, but we're, we're talking about that um, technology readiness to collaborate with uh, the ecosystem partners is, is now top of mind, right? A lot of people, uh, everyone's talking about it, but I think just having some structured thoughts around it. Now, what you're seeing here is a, a benchmark from Terminus on your left-hand side, and then a McKinsey uh, diagram on the right. But if you look at it, top, uh, one of the top uh, items that uh, these banks think about is, first of all, open banking, right? 71% 70, rates at uh, more than uh, four, four or five out of five, right? And then if you look at the McKinsey uh, AI bank of the future, um, beyond bank channels and journeys is, is again, part of the reimagining engagement. So, so again, these are not, um, I don't see them as new anymore. I think it's now just us as an industry. So whether you're a your bank, whether you're an ecosystem player, it's really just work together and keep focusing on delivering uh, the best um, experience and services uh, for our customers because only with that will the, will the industry uh, continue to grow and benefit. Um, I also I like to put this down as well because um, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a lot of players out there, but having a disciplined approach, right? Um, do you know who you need? Who will you work with? How you will work with them? Um, for example, here, FinTech 250, right? In the recent CB Insights report. If you look at it in the context of open banking, well, are these the future third party service providers um, that will get registered, right? And, and, and be, um, be reviewed by the, by, by the regulator, for example. And this is just a, a tip of the iceberg, right? So there's a tin fintech 250, and then you think about there's other e-com players out there, there's other platform players out there. So all of a sudden, your ability to efficiently work with these players to help fulfill your own capability gap, um, and also your willingness to let them uh, service your customers, is going to become the the differences between a very successful uh, platform company who are, who's thriving in the eco, uh, open banking ecosystem or someone who's just 
you know, who tries and then it, it sort of got too hard and then they, they, they give up, right? So I think it's really, um, it's not just about the technology, right? It's really about thinking through your business, your customers, your value add, right? What you're really good at, and then identify the ecosystem players out there that also have something that they're really good at and making them work together. Um, this is a great uh, diagram from uh, Deal Room. So if you look at, these are, these are all fintech companies, right? If you look at it, but if you look at who's investing in them, um, you know, are these, are we, do we see them as platform companies? So the, the, you, what you're seeing here is a series of different players, right? So all of a sudden, um, fintech companies that you're dealing with today, um, yeah, affects the injection of capital or thanks to them being a larger uh, group of platform players, now are they now becoming platform companies? Or actually, are they a bit of both? Look, the, we, we, don't, we won't know the answer, but all I know is that um, it's happening, the movement is there, um, they are already making an impact. Now, the impact is different across different locations, but certainly in the context of open banking, banks needs to work with the ecosystem. And likewise, ecosystem, the fintechs, they must work with the banks um, and really focus on what they're good at in their respective domain. And hopefully the one plus, two, one, plus one works out to be greater than two. Um, and finally, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this, right, from uh, CFTE. Now, forget about the evaluations, uh, whether you know, it's, it's, it's as of published, but certainly worth looking at the trend, which is around bringing together a platform business model and open banking ecosystem. I, I think there's endless uh, opportunity because first of all, um, it opens up untapped space that you look, if you look at the McKinsey report, it talks about more than 30% of the global economic activity could be supported, right? Could be served by the various digital platforms. But the scary fact is only 3% have adopted any form of platform strategy, when, when, uh, depending on which, well, whatever your definition is. And then you look at the, uh, the valuations, um, I think the, it, the result sort of speaks for itself, but it also shows you where the, where the trend is, right? The trend is no longer a big, uh, a big horizontal players who tries to do everything themselves. Because I think, uh, especially with uh, the evolution of um, a lot of the, the technology tool sets that are now made available, such as OpenAPI, which today I'm sure the audience have heard different uh, different implementations and also different uh, progress that this is making. But really, it, it's not the API, right? You can you everyone's got access to the same technology, but what business model have you applied to this technology in order to create more value, not just for the company, right? It's creating more value for both the customers and also the ecosystem players, so that it's, it's not a zero-sum game, right? It, it's about creating a much bigger pie that otherwise would not have been even served, right? People wouldn't even think about uh, working in that, uh, in that area, right? In that business opportunity. So I think that's the, 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 probably the most exciting part uh, that I see. And uh, that ends my formal uh, presentation. And uh, yeah. I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, uh, Gary, thanks. So uh, we we uh, we still have uh, one or two minutes left. So maybe a quick questions. So uh, you mentioned about the uh, platform business model is a good fast track to the open uh, banking ecosystem. But uh, we also see that there's quite some company want to be doing the platform business. Can you observe or see any common mistake that um, maybe those uh, business why they can't be a successful platform business and then uh, doing what you you mentioned talk about the shortcut what what common mistake they may be doing can uh, you say about something i think what uh what we do see is that when um i think one one thing is that when they want to get into a new area right so they, they decide to to play in the platform they decide to work with the ecosystem but what they end up doing is they don't actually focus on what the what the ecosystem partner is is best doing, right? They try to change them to fit how they're running the business today. So as a result, you're not maximizing. So first of all, you're not allowing them to fully showcase what they can do for your customers. 
you okay. end up putting your own rules around what they can do. So you you didn't make a ch you you you'd integrate them as a technical integration, but you never really integrated the business model. Yeah, got that, got that, got that. So, and you also mentioned about the domain, is it? Uh, so uh, you, you, you believe that domain is uh, one of the key areas, is it? Do you want to okay. Yeah, um, I think knowing where you play is, is extremely important. Um, you know, we've seen experiment where, um, you know, tradition, you know, commercial banks wanting to do uh, virtual banking or neo banks, right? Um, some were more successful than others, but I think the more successful ones are the one that is willing to change their business model, and okay. and and accept the fact that their whole business have have evolved, and not go back to you know just a new way of doing a traditional business. I think that's when um, they realize that their internal uh, DA won't allow the, the new innovation, no matter how good the offering is, to be successful at all. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Gary. So thanks for your time to share your insight from Alibaba Cow. And this is really insightful. So uh, uh, maybe let me take the chance to welcome another speakers. So thanks, Gary.